Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, I guess you've heard healthcare.gov, the insurance marketplace is now open. Obamacare is apparently upon us. And while those of us who prefer natural health to the medical model already see that Americans are now being forced into a long, broken system, we who seek biblical health must open our spiritual eyes to what is truly going on. Do not let the continuing battle over Obamacare fool you. It's just another media smokescreen. What's really playing out in our lifetime was prophesied a millennia, uh, more than a millennia ago, and every follower of Jesus should have absolutely nothing to do with it. Join Dr. Jeff and me as we educate, equip, and empower you on today's program, which is called Obamacare versus Healthcare, here on Biblical Health Radio and live stream. Remember, it's not what they don't want you to think. Think about that. You can do this. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah. Of course, that's 1 Thessalonians 5.23, the watchword of biblical health, television, radio, live stream, and everything else that we do here. Thank you so much for joining the revolution. I am, you see, not a doctor, not a doctor. We have to make that clear, not a doctor. Hi, I'm Goldman, but we do have on the line... A doctor, Dr. Jeff Azim, coming in on the Skype from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Dr. Jeff. Hi, hi. I'm, hey, man. I'm, I'm not a real doctor, though. I only deal in the natural world. <laughs> right, so in I'm the natural health. Doctor. doctor of chiropractic. <laughs> well, Jeff, dare I say, we have, I, I think, and we've been doing this for really years, what, three and a half years now? We, the, today's program is, I think, the most important one we've ever done. It's not really? what I think that you think that you think. It's but what you think I don't think is what the issue is. It's not what they don't want you to think or that we want you to think. <laughs> Whatever that means. But we want you to think. We don't want you to follow Matthew, uh, what is it, 517? Think not. Think not. Jesus said, think not. But he went on to say other things. We shouldn't stop there. Well, Jeff, I want to just plug because we're only here a half an hour a week, but on biblicalhealth.tv, we're there all the time. Please go over get uh, all the information that we have there, become at least a free member. And also, you know what? Get Lessons for Healthy Living 2.0. It is the education that you need to fight against the system and what they don't want you to think that you don't want to think or something like that. Lessonsforhealthyliving.com. And you can watch that for a donation of any amount. We're still offering that. Not sure how much longer we're doing that, but get over there right after the show. Well, Jeff. The big news is that the government, the U.S. government, is shut down. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Some, some might call this government efficiency. I think it's only about 15% of the government, but they're trying, just like with the sequester, to make it painful and seem like the whole government is shut down. But that is not really the story, and that's not what we want to cover. What is being made into the story is that uh, a section of House Republicans or are holding the budget at bay because of Obamacare and protests over Obamacare. And in fact, we did three programs on Obamacare back, I believe, in 2010. And you can listen to them in the Well With You archives. And in order to do that, all you need to do is become a free member at biblicalhealth.tv. And we have a whole bunch of our old radio shows, but they're not really old. They're current. They're like prophecy almost <laughs> they are timeless that, that's the things that prophetic. the things that we talked about but we really go into it deep we did three actually back then we were doing 45 minute shows i believe and we did three of them all about obamacare because at the time it was being enacted and now it is upon us because the um 
the the marketplace for registering into this Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act, as it's been known, is upon us. You can go over there, although as um, we'll we'll eventually talk about, really trying to go over there, uh, maybe maybe show what it's going to be like, the system's going to be like, because it's not working so smoothly. And we've also had reports about uh, and how people. Well, first of all, you need to register yourself before you go in. So they're already starting to register people. And what happens if you want to opt out? And there's been some reports that they're saying they're going to uh, to attach it to your bank account if you want to opt out or the IRS fines and just craziness that's going on. But we like well, to go to- they can't find you because the IRS is closed currently. So they can't- Oh, right. Anything. Are they? Are the IRS? They're not funding <laughs> the themselves over yes. at the IRS? Okay. They are absolutely closed. Well, yes. a couple of things are going on there because you really need to realize that in this media circus, and that's where I come in as the expert, as the media guy, it's never what they want you to think. It's what- George Carlin uh, famously called like the semblance of freedom or, you know, that, that things are there that seem like you're making decisions, but you're really not. It's orchestrated. And even within the media, that, it's not. That's, that's like a Jedi. You yeah. go, look over here. Right. It's, it's magic. <laughs> Je- and Jedi night. It's, yes. it's a media smoke screen. And, and so even within that, we have uh, the, the South Carolina House, not too far from here. We're broadcasting from Charlotte, just across the border. The South Carolina House of representatives have actually using their own state's Health Care Freedom Protection Act uh, has said that anyone trying to enforce Obamacare is actually breaking the law uh, and that they're not allowed to do it. And they're standing behind that. It's now in the South Carolina Senate uh, because um, you can't force people. Can you believe it's actually unconstitutional to force people to buy health care? I-, I can't, not according to the Supreme Court, but at least states rights, South Carolina is holding up to that. I also have a... Um, uh, an article, it was a, an op-ed in Forbes just um, just yesterday, uh, uh, written by Congressman Michael Burgess from Texas and Dr. Ben Carson, who's the emeritus professor of neurosurgery, oncology, plastic surgery, and pediatrics at John Hopkins. People may recognize him from the Cuba Gooding Jr. movie, Gifted Hands. Uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. did, an, uh, did a, a movie uh, with this man's story, incredible story. And they wrote a, uh, an article you should look up in Forbes talking about this is really uh, European style socialism and it's cobbled together and they didn't really put a lot of thinking. It was, they think they say in here, it never was really supposed to become It wasn't law. supposed to happen, but it did. But and it now did. What? And yes. now what? Because it's really cobbled together and it's going to fall apart. And this is coming from, you know, a doctor who's worked within the system his whole life and very successfully helping patients. Uh, as much as he understand it. But that, to me, Jeff, and to you, I believe is not really the story. We, we have to go deeper. And to do that, we're going to, to delve a little into Orwellian thought. We have to go all the way back to 1984, <laughs> to 1940. 49, yeah, 49. 1949 to 1984. It's okay. like the Twilight Zone. Because we're looking at something that is called healthcare. Uh, health healthcare reform, the Affordable Health Care Act, uh, things like that. And, you know, words carry a lot of power. The entire universe was spoken into being by the Almighty. So words carry a lot of power, and the definition of words carry a lot of power. And, you know, when was the last time I'll ask you in our audience out there? And by, and by the way, I didn't mention, if you're not watching us on the live stream, you really should. If you're listening to us on Blog Talk Radio, that's fantastic, but there's a link there to click over and watch the video on the live stream. We uh, ask you to do that um, so that you can see us, and uh, and sometimes we hold stuff up or show things in the program. But uh, when was the last time you read 1984 by George Orwell? Did you read it in high school? Did you Were you supposed to read it in high school, but you didn't? You know what? Uh, I read it a few years ago, had my wife read it, sent, read it, sent it to Jeff, said, you have to read this because... It's scarily it's coming it to is pass. frightening. And it really... He, he must have had some prophetic gift because it is happening in front of our eyes. And, and it's happening in ways that he couldn't have imagined because he couldn't have fully imagined the technology that we have today. But what I wanted to get into is this thing called Newspeak that is a, a term that Orwell uh, put together in 1984. And Newspeak, uh, I'll read from the Wikipedia, not that w- Wikipedia is part of the, uh, the system of re-educating us all, but you know what, for the time being, it's still pretty open to ideas. Newspeak is the fictional language in the novel 1984. It is a controlled language created by the totalitarian state as a tool to limit free thought, 
the con and concepts that pose a threat to the regime, such as freedom, self-expression, individuality, peace, any form of thought alternate to the party's construct is classified as thought crime. That's one word, thought crime. And it really goes into detail in this in the book. I encourage you to read it. Yes, it's very fascinating when you read about the whole explanation in the, uh, in the appendix of the book. Yeah, and, and, and you have and, to read it a few times to get what they're trying, what he's trying to say. And it's fantastic literature, too. It's uh, scary. But the language follows, for the most part, the same grammatical rules as English, but has a much more limiting and constantly shifting vocabulary. Any synonyms or antonyms? along with undesirable concepts are eradicated. The goal is for everyone to be speaking this language by the year 2050. Uh, of course, the story is set in 1984. In the meantime, old speak, which is current English, is still spoken among the prol proles, which is the proletariat, the working class citizens still speak it, but the elite and those who are working for Big Brother speak this new speak and try to bring it into the language. And uh, I don't have time to go into it, but. Uh, the aim is first removing synonyms and antonyms so you don't have simple concepts uh, like pleasure and pain, happiness and sadness, good think and crime think. Uh, we, we have, uh, you know, bad is ungood. So there's no such thing as bad. Uh, and then if you want to make a superlative, better becomes plus good and best is double plus good. So we try to simplify the language as much as we can. Uh, and... Um, of course, uh, you want to take things like freedom completely out of the language because you're controlling thought. And so, for example, you have the word free still exists, but it's like from the dog is free from lice or this field is free from weeds, not that it is something that allows you freedom or free will or free choice. And by taking things out of the language, concepts, complete concepts, removing them from the language, guess what? You control thought. And words take on new meaning, and people really don't know what to think anymore, and you end up with double think, uh, and that anything that goes against what the system wants you to think, what the orthodoxy of the system becomes crime think. It is something that you are just not allowed to think anymore. And so, yes, it's like the scripture, think not. Like, think not. And you erase the rest of it. Right. And, and of course, we have, you know, those who call, you know, evil good and good evil. And we, and we move into that realm. And why would people do that? Well, now we have this thing called political correctness. And there's a lot of language that's being changed in order, seemingly, in order to be polite that you wouldn't want to offend people. And so some say this isn't really Orwellian uh, a thought, a thought control at all. We're merely doing it to be polite to each other. But, you know, since this was revealed in 1984, taking a different tact of can't we just all get along and we should make sure that we don't speak anything that might possibly offend anyone, uh, which more and more is specifically anything that the scriptures say uh, that is definitively good or evil or bad or good or anything that the Almighty has to say, of course, is offensive because it is judgmental and we wouldn't want to do that. But I somewhat digress. Uh, we get into things now with that slight... <laughs> move into an understanding of Orwellian thought and mind control into something, Jeff, called the Affordable Care Act. And mm. we have to look at those words, not so much act, although maybe we should, but affordable and then, <laughs> ca <laughs> and then care. It's just an act. Yeah, and, and then care, well, it's now a law, you know, uh, affordable care law, uh, 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 the word care and health care. So first of all, in order, let's talk about affordable. Jeff, what have you heard about the affordableness of the Affordable Care Act? Yes, it's fascinating. Listening to a report the other day by one of the authors of the act is uh, some, I used to work in the government and he's now a, a journalist. I forget his name, but he's talking about how it's just good and it's good for everyone and so on. And, and the argument coming from someone else was, well, you know, the truth is that it's only more affordable for people on the two extremes, and that is those that are very, very ill or those that are very, very poor approaching the poverty line. And when he was questioned about this, uh, the, uh, the, the advocate of the, of the act gave examples like, uh, you know, a low paid uh, uh, wage uh, employee of a landscaping business in California where they averaged $17,000 a year in income and another person he knew that was, uh, had a severe diagnosis of cancer. And, uh, and so the, the truth is that the only people getting a good break in this are those that are on these two extremes, the, uh, those that are very ill and those that are uh, 
make very low wages and everybody in between, the vast majority of the nation uh, is going to pay more for health care than they would have otherwise. That's that's the basic fact. That's not even opinion. That and, is a and fact. Not, and not just that, but by redefining uh, uh, full time work as I believe thirty hours, what yep. it's what it's happening is companies, large companies, because uh, companies over fifty people uh, must get their employees uh, health care under this. That companies are cutting back hours on workers in order to push them below the level where they have to get them health care. So now, rather than these people who who would have gotten possibly health care, uh, they're because things are getting more expensive and and because a company is being forced to have all its workers now have it, there are going to be other workers that are going to be forced out into the marketplace now having to pay for it themselves, but no longer even being full-time employees. So they're making less money and have to go out and buy it. And this, even though this isn't what we want to get into in this program, has to be dealt with because, again, this was not supposed to become law and uh, uh, by a lot of people's account. Uh, and so is it affordable? Well, for those with pre-existing conditions who couldn't get insurance at all, Yes, it's a it's a very great thing. Again, if you want to be part of the system, which we will get into, uh, but for the vast majority of people, they could be looking at a real problem. And then, of course, all the reasons why people are banning it, financially believing that it will end up bankrupting uh, the nation, because who is going to really pay these bills in and the long know, term? I, you know, thinking about this it becoming a law, if you remember back to when this happened, it's not like it happened in the standard way. Standard way Congress passes, he couldn't get the votes he needed to get the 60-40 uh, decisions. So mm -hmm. he pulled some, one of those uh, those trump cards where you could change the rule for a specific vote that you only need 51-49. So he didn't really get the votes. This wasn't a mandate where right. it was very obvious that the, that the legal structure in our country wanted it. He got like 51% of yeah. the votes, not 60. And it's being so. enforced by the IRS um, and that you will right. be taxed. I mean, even if you don't want insurance at all, Within a couple of years, you'll be paying for a family at least two thousand dollars to get nothing. So, let's talk about health care. Let's. Um, I, I, this is how health care. Okay, and you would think health care. It's pretty easy to define, but this is how it's being defined lately. Health care is the diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of disease, illness, injury, and other physical and mental impairments in humans. Health care is delivered by practitioners in medicine, optometry, dentistry, nursing, pharmacy, allied health, and other care providers. It refers to the work done in providing primary care, secondary, tertiary, as well as public health. So you would think that something on health care would actually be taking care of people's health. But you can see that the term in this new speak that we have now is really taking people into a medical model of diagnosing and treating disease as opposed to taking care of health. And so we have this thing that is called health. Now, we have to dig deeper because you look at, well, what is allied health? And you look at, because that's one of the things. I mean, we, we say medicine, optometry, dentistry, nursing, pharmacy. Okay, we know those things, and that's all medical. But allied health is basically the same thing, anesthesia technicians, uh, community health workers, dental hygienists. There are dietitians in there. There are uh, athletic trainers and such. But for the most part, when you look, and I have a very large list here of people, it's really still just people who support the medical model. And then it goes even deeper into care providers. And when you get there, you have mental health practitioners, geriatric care practitioners, surgical practitioners, eye care practitioners. And you look at this whole model and it's what's called the allopathic model or what you would call the, I hate the word traditional, but the traditional medical model, this whole system that we call healthcare, that the government tells you to go on healthcare.gov and buy into the system is really an allopathic model. And only when you get to the very, very bottom of the list, do you have what's called traditional and complementary medical practitioners of which Dr. Jeff, I believe you, you would be lumped into that category as a chiropractor. And which one, one am I in nutrition, I, traditional com and complementary, complementary, complementary. That means, uh, and thank, but the thing is, you, you. you don't, you don't say nice things about them necessarily. And they don't <laughs> say nice things about you. So I don't know where the complimentary part comes in. Uh, but Jeff, I know we did a program on this quite a while back. Um, the AMA, the American Medical Association has spent about a hundred years making all natural methods like nutrition, chiropractic, essential oils, energy medicine into quackery in the eyes of the people. Would you please go into that a little bit as we, as because really 
this system, and this is what we want to hit home on today's program, this healthcare system is really, in the eyes of the public, the government, and everybody, how has it become the allopathic model is now our healthcare system? Well, you know, I think we did a couple of shows about that, too, way back when, in uh, probably 2010. But you could go back into the history of medicine, the actual history in Western medicine that we find, uh, if you trace the AMA backwards, you'll find that it really wasn't the traditional form of medicine in the U.S. back in the 1800s. It really was more of uh, the natural approach, uh, using nature and so on. Uh, But when the drug companies got involved and uh, some overseeing organizations like the AMA were formed, which is really nothing more than a, uh, you know, a a boys club of uh, doctors and organizations, it doesn't have any real authority. The AMA is not any kind of Uh, authority in any way at all, other than they're a club that people want to be a part of. And so they wanted to institute a certain belief system and and elevate the status of the medical doctor above the servant status. And so they gave them, uh, you know, more and better credentials and they and they and they painted the school in a light that it was more and more difficult and exclusive. And uh, and the drug companies endowed the, the industry with lots of money. And so it became nothing more than a bunch of, uh, you know, paid or maybe uh, supported uh, referral sources like, uh, you know, um, you know, salesmen that were just pushing a certain agenda. And, and if you don't stay with that agenda, you get ostracized. So it's, it gets hard to get out. You get trapped into the system. And so healthcare really became disease care and drug pushing. And uh, the, the natural professions like homeopathy and naturopathy and, and other professions that came along the way, like osteopathy at the time, 1890, chiropractic, 1895, uh, they, they became uh, ridiculed and, and, matter of fact, had specific campaigns against them. And really, medicine then goes ahead and only hijacks these natural, natural things and kind of embraces them after they realize they can't fight anymore. It's got too much of a groundswell. So they hijack it and they try to bring it back into the fold. And that's only really uh, as of late. I mean, that's yeah, only that's, the past well, 20 whenever, whenever years they need so. to write, you know, you know, like even the health industry, even talking about nutrition at all only becomes, uh, you know, mainstream when they realize, wow, I can't really beat this. I have to somehow incorporate it. But then they incorporate it into this medical thing. That's what's happening in the supplement industry. Medicine wants mm-hmm. to regulate it like it's very dangerous. You got to regulate these supplements because, you know, people are at risk. Yet you have a medical industry that kills near near a quarter of a million people a year with proper diagnosis and treatment. Me- and meaning, so, meaning proper. These people die with a yeah, properly it's not prescribed drug. It's not right. malpractice. It's just they got diagnosed correctly. Standard of care was correct. The treatment protocols were correct. The person died anyway. Oops. And so that's, you know, near a quarter of a million people a year. And uh, yet they have to protect you from taking, you know, super green capsules and various other things. Or lavender or peppermint oil. Yeah, or some kind of essential oil. And so the the system is twisted. And, uh, you know, it's not unlike the biblical concept of calling evil good and good evil. Uh, The very things that save you and help you. And, and, and really, quite frankly, the very things that uh, medicine already knows or the industry already knows is, is what can be done for real prevention and, and real health care uh, are really left out. They, they get designated either to nothing or way, 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 way down the well, list. Right. As, some kind as of we saw, print. as we saw here, you know, it's at the very, very bottom of the list, you know, after, you know, the guy who like valet parks your car at the hospital. <laughs> on the list here, I think he gets a higher, but you know, up there on the list of healthcare than uh, than these practitioners. And you have things like Quackwatch, you know, dot com, and these other you know websites that anything that has to do with anything, which you know, how in the world did these things get labeled alternative? The fact that we even call natural health alternative health and and medicine became traditional. Yeah. It's and all part of the way of making people think. Of you know, the new it's an speak. alternative, it's right. got to be second. Yep, exactly. Right. And, and, you know, you look, and if I were to say to you, well, we're going to, like, you know, run these tests on you, and then I'm going to go make this potion that's filled with, that's just chemicals, and you're going to go out, and, you know, you're going to take this, and it's going to get you better. And you say, well, that sounds, you know, maybe like a witch doctor to me. And actually, no, it's it's traditional medicine, but the doctor doesn't make up the potions anymore. He writes them on a piece of paper, which... You know, ninety nine point nine percent of people, without questioning it, will go fill with, that, an, with the, another with another issue. guy with a that's white it. coat at the pharmacy, 
And so that they've found a way to make even more money because now even the doctor doesn't even prescribe. You got to go to another guy and he has to make money. And then we end up with all these, you know, specialties and, you know, drug interactions and all these other things that go on within the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, whereas these industries that have no, these alternative that were, where nobody's dying, you know, by taking the essential oils or by getting chiropractic and all of these other things, they're made out to be quackery. They're made out to be dangerous. They're made out to be, you know, juvenile. And these things don't really work. And that's what people think. And that's how we're able to put the label health care on a system that is anything but. And if you, right. you know, the yeah. disease economy. That's yeah, right. you really want the customer to, to think they've demanded what you're selling. And that's Ooh, the secret. The secret is that the person comes to you and they're disappointed if they don't get what you're already selling because they've convinced themselves through the various media outlets that this is what they need. So if you don't leave the doctor with a prescription or some kind of harmful treatment protocol, you're actually PO'd as a, as a, uh, as a customer. And so, wow, what an amazing system that they have the customer demanding their product when, in fact, the customer should be questioning, why is it that I need this? And, uh, and, and well, why is my body not functioning and, the way it's supposed to? And, and is there something I could do to fix it without these drugs? And even when you listen to an ad or read a magazine ad where, you know, two thirds of the radio or TV time is taken up with side effects or, you know, there's an ad and then you flip the page in the magazine and there's a whole page of five printed side effects that people are still coming in to get the drugs, even though the side effects very often are the things that the person wants to get rid of or worth worse, including death. It's really, really scary. And uh, what we need to realize is that this Obamacare is one of the last big plays of the Babylonian system. I know that's a big statement, but it's true. And I've come to realize that. And you're going to see that too. They are trying to force everyone into the system to take your money, whether you receive any services or not. Yes, brothers and sisters, this is what Obamacare is really about. This is Babylon taking over. And this topic is so big and so important that guess what? You can tell if you've looked at the clock, we're going to make this a two-parter because we've only just laid the foundation for showing you what Obamacare really is about as a believer in the Messiah. And so on next week's Biblical Health Radio and live stream, we're going to talk about the much-touted free preventative care services that are part of the 10 essential health benefits. Boy, look at those terms of Obamacare and show you how they are also not what they don't want you to think. And also not what they don't want you to think. And also we're going to show you how most of the church worldwide is, dare we say, part of this system. Ouch. Now, can I get an ouch on ouch. that? But as we always want to leave you with hope, on next week's program, we're going to give you alternates to Obamacare to keep you and your family really healthy. So next week, Obamacare versus healthcare, part two. And we have a lot to share. You're going, you really, really need to listen in or watch this program. And so as we part ways, we will remind you, biblicalhealth.tv. At least get a free membership. Go over there and Watch, listen, excuse me, we weren't on live stream, our three-parter on Obamacare from a few years ago, and let us know how we did. <laughs> Looking forward, lessonsforhealthyliving.com. Go over there to get yourself educated and equipped about real health care. And then, of course, we're here every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Biblical Health Radio and live stream. Dr. Jeff, thanks so much. All right, see you next time. Next week. Thanks for joining us here on Biblical Health Television Radio and live stream. I'm not a doctor. I am Goldman.